Last week, people in Spain and Portugal experienced a really long blackout. And the analysis, while it's certainly not complete, talks about how much electricity each country is generating, importing and exporting. That's right, you can import and export electricity. It's a pretty common thing. And so for this week's Bamboo Weekly, I decided to look at statistics from the International Energy Association, which is an international sort of club of countries that want to share energy information. And I wanted to analyze data about countries and how much electricity they are producing, importing, and exporting. And today we are going to go through the first two questions and answers that I posed there. So I'm first going to import pandas as PD, and I'm going to set my file name. And then the first task I gave you is to import the CSV file into a data frame. Easy enough, I'll say df equals pd.readcsv of file name. Right? That's like one of the most straightforward things that we do in pandas. And I do that and I get an error. And the error is a Unicode decode error. So I'm kind of old as you can tell. And so I remember back when the standard way to store data in a file was in what we called ASCII. And ASCII handled, at least by default, or normally standardly, only letters, numbers, and digits. And letters really what I mean is in the basic English language uh, alphabet, not with any of the diacritical marks that you get in Western, let alone Eastern European countries, let alone other languages. And so one byte equals one character was something that I grew up in, but that is not even close to enough for the modern world. In the modern world, we want to handle all languages. And to do that, we use Unicode. The problem is that there are many, many more characters in it, it, many more characters than we can fit into one byte. So one solution is to have a multi-byte encoding where every character is going to take two bytes or four bytes on disk. But if we want to maintain compatibility with ASCII, then what we can use is something known as UTF-8. And UTF-8 says, if it's like ASCII, then we'll only use one byte. Or sometimes we'll use two, or sometimes we'll use three, or even more. And so you can't rely on this one byte equals one character thing. It also means that when you're reading data from a file, certain bytes need to be at the beginning of a character and certain bytes need to be at the end of a character. You can't just willy-nilly mix bytes all over the place. And that's what this error is telling us. It's saying basically, hey, I tried to read in Unicode data, but the bytes were not where I expected them to be. I cannot turn this into Unicode characters. I'm giving up. So what can we do about this? Well, actually, I checked, and this file is in what we would call ISO 8859-1, also known as Latin 1, meaning that it is using one byte per character, but it's using the upper half of that byte for Western European languages. And so if I now say I'm going to load it in with encoding Latin 1, we don't get that error. That's the good news. The bad news is we get a different error. And the different error, it's not really an error, it's a warning, right? It's telling us the columns have mixed types. And what that means is the file is big enough that Pandas is going to try to read it in in different chunks. And then it will try to figure out what are the D types for the columns in the first chunk? What are the D types for the columns in the second chunk, in the third chunk, and so forth? And then it'll stick them all together, and that normally works just fine. But what if you have different D types in the first chunks columns and the second chunks columns? Then it gets a little confused and frustrated, and this is what we get. It says columns have mixed types. And so basically what we have to do is, well, there are two different possibilities. One is specify D type. We can pass it the D type keyword argument, and that will allow us to specify with a dictionary which column should get which D type. And then it doesn't have to guess. It's not going to figure out, is this an integer? Is this a float? Is this an object? It's just going to give us the, value, the, the D types that we specified. Another way is to say low memory equals false. If we do that, then it reads the whole file at once into memory, and it doesn't have to stick any combinations of chunks together. That all makes a lot of sense. And we could do one of those things, but we're not going to. And the reason is, as you can see here, what is going on with these first few rows? It shows us that the first few rows in the file are not data. The first few rows are comments. And so that's part of where it's getting confused. So what I can do is say, hey, listen, pandas, what I want you to do is look at header equals eight. And that means the row with index eight, meaning the ninth row, that's where the column headers are. Ignore everything up to that point. And sure enough, we do that. And suddenly everything works great. We get all of our values. We get the column headers. Everything is fine. Actually, that's not true. Because I did say, make sure the time column is treated as a date time value. And if I look now, 
D types, we see that time is actually an object. Why? Because read CSV does not by default, um, unless you're using PyArrow, it does not by default even try to parse things as dates. We have to give it a little kick. So I'm going to say here, parse dates equals time. And that will actually work, but we're going to get another warning. And the warning is, hey, this is not a standard kind of format. You need to specify the format if you want me to not go off and try guessing. Now, it will actually work doing this because it uses some date parsing tools from within Python. But we can avoid that warning and make it work a little faster and better by saying date format equals. And the format here is percent %b percent %y. What the heck does that mean? It means the full name of the month, followed by space, followed by the full four-digit year. If I do that, look at that. We get the dates back, no warning. And if I check the D types, sure enough, we now have the time being date time 64. So we've successfully read in the data frame, and now we have all the information about energy production, import and export for a whole lot of countries. But... There is one more thing. As I say here, remove rows in which the country column is from the OECD or from the IEA. And the problem is basically that it gave us a bunch of aggregate totals. And so we don't want that. We don't want that because it's going to throw off our analysis, right? If I'm trying to find out which countries have generated the most electricity to get the whole OECD, well, that's going to like be more than any one country. So how am I going to deal with this? Well, I'm going to, after getting the new data frame back, but before assigning it to DF, I'm going to say lock and lambda DF. And this is my way of filtering. You might know that we can use dot lock to filter out our rows, and we can specify one index. We can specify multiple indexes. We can also give it a Boolean series. And a Boolean series then says, wherever this is true, we will keep the rows. And wherever it's false, we will throw out the rows. We will not keep them. It's a way to like whittle down our data frame. But we don't have to pass a Boolean series directly. We can run up, we can pass a function, a lambda, and wherever that lambda then, after it runs or when it runs, returns true, we keep the rows, and where it doesn't, we throw out the rows. So this is a lambda, and you can see that I'm using the parameter df underscore. That's to indicate that we're not talking about our original df, which, by the way, has not been defined yet, which, by the way, doesn't exist. So we don't want to use the regular df. We want to use df underscore, this is a parameter, it's a local variable, and it's whatever we got from the line above. So read CSV, and now I can say df underscore country dot stir dot contains of either OECD or IEA. And I'm using a regular expression here, which is actually handled just fine by uh, uh, stir dot contains. This is great except for one thing, it now gave me exactly the opposite of what I asked for. Right? I wanted where the line did not include OECD or IEA, and this is where it does. And that's because I have to flip the logic here. I have to use a tilde, and now that will get rid of all those rows, and now my data frame contains all the rows for all the countries, but not for the groupings from OECD and IEA. Pretty snazzy, pretty great. So we now have our data frame. Fantastic. And we have our D types, and I can even check how big is this data frame. I say df.shape, and we see it is 131,000 rows. Uh, plus six columns. Okay, next task I ask you to do in Bamboo Weekly is create a bar plot showing the 10 countries that had greatest total net electricity production 2025. So I'm going to say here df, and then I'm going to say dot lock lambda df underscore of time dot dt dot year equals equals 2025. In other words, I only want those, uh, I only want things from 2025. Oh, sorry, forgot to, I my syntax was wrong a little bit. So here is my lambda, right? And so I'm saying basically keep only those rows where the year in our date time value is going to be 2025. Next, I only want lambda df, df underscore of balance equals equals net electricity production, right? So I'm only going to want those things. And now I get a whole bunch of less rows. I get a subset of the rows from this data frame. And the reason I like using dot lock and lambda so much in this sort of context is I can just stack them one after the other after the other, and I can play with them and add them, remove them, comment them out. And because we're using lambda, because we're using df underscore, I'm not referring back to the original df, and I can really mix and match these. The other thing I have to get rid of, I discovered, is I have to get rid of wherever the product includes the word total. So I'm going to say dot stir contains 
total. And the reason I have to get rid of that is those are the aggregates of everything else. And so if I have this kind of power, this kind of power, this kind of power, and then the total, I'm going to be counting everything twice. So now that I do that, and I want to use that tilde here as well, right? That's going to flip my logic once again. I don't want where it contains the total. And so now we're going to get a whole lot fewer rows. We're only going to get 452 rows. Fantastic. Now what do I want to do? Well, now I want to group it by country, right? I want to find out how much electricity did each country generate. So I'm going to say here group by country value dot sum, which means for each country in our data set, I want you to sum the value for that country. And when I do that, I get a result. I get a series, a series whose index consists of country names. And I have now the sum for each country. Not too bad, but I don't want all of them. I don't, I want only the 10 largest. So I'm going to say dot n largest 10. And now we get many, many fewer. And now, I mean, I can look at these numbers, but actually I just want to plot them. So I'm going to say dot plot dot bar. And look at this. We can now see which countries have generated the most electricity in 2025, which is, by the way, less than half over. So, you know, this is showing us all these countries. And we can see that China has generated a lot more electricity than anyone else. I guess not a big surprise. Followed by the U.S., followed by India, Japan, Canada, Brazil, France, Korea, Germany, and Turkey. So we can now see who is generating a lot of electricity. And later on in this analysis, in my questions and solutions for Bamboo Weekly, we look more at who is importing, who is exporting, and uh, so on and so forth. I hope that you enjoyed this and learned from it. Please let me know what questions you have. I want to hear them. I want to answer them. What topics would you like me to address next? Don't forget to like and subscribe. And I will be back real soon with lots more videos about Python and pandas and everything in between. See you again soon.